Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Furla Julia Gulia uh, crossbody bag. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come and join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today, and you gotta excuse the hair, it's kind of all over the place, but... I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, all right, so let's get started with the very first question. Starting with Mayette Sherry. Hopefully I said that correctly. Considering the repeated issues with quality control at Louis Vuitton, why the loyalty, especially at that price point? This is a phenomenal, phenomenal question. So why the loyalty on a fashion house that's had so many problems? Um, now, I cannot deny the fact that there's been a lot of issues that have come up with the fashion house more so than ever before, more so now than ever before, um, whether that's quality control or even customer service. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have never experienced that, and I think that that is fantastic, and I hope that stays that way for you. Um, you know, But then you also hear about people that have had to get their items repaired after having having only owned them for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, or they've had it in repair longer than they've actually owned the item itself. Uh, so that always comes up and you hear about it a lot more often. I know that we've discussed it on MMQA quite a few times, um, but in the time that, um, that I've been buying Louis Vuitton, I've had a handful of items that I've had to get repaired or replaced. And I haven't really added too much more ever since I started to have issues with the items that I needed to get repaired. Uh, when that ended up happening, it's almost like it happened back to back. Uh, you know, this item had to get replaced, this item had to get repaired, and it was, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. However, I still absolutely love them. And it's almost like for me, it's, it's my first love when it came to luxury goods. And, it's, it has a very, very soft spot in my heart, kind of like Coach does. I will always appreciate it, and I'm always going to root for it. It's almost like, even though I know it does have quality control issues, and this is going on, you hear about all, you know, all of the, all of the problems, all of the issues, I'm still on the sidelines, still rooting that they are going to come back, that their quality is going to be better than ever before, and that all of these issues are going to be a thing of the past. That might be wishful thinking on my behalf. Some people might think that's absolutely ridiculous for me to see it that way. To be completely honest, I don't wanna break up with Louis Vuitton. I might take a break from Louis Vuitton, but I do not want to take, I don't want to break up with it. You know, I, 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 I don't know. I just, I love it. And I've said it before. Sometimes when I go into the boutique, I feel like, like I'm at home as crazy as that sounds, judge me all you want. I don't care. But when I'm there, I feel so comfortable as opposed to going into other fashion houses that I'm not as comfortable. It's almost like I'm visiting, I'm hanging out, but it's not like I can be myself 100% if that makes any sense. But when I'm at Louis Vuitton, it's completely different. It's a completely different experience that I love. Even if I don't buy something, I like going in there and seeing the new products and um, I don't know, just getting to know more about the more about the brand so maybe i'm crazy but that's why i have so much loyalty for it i am still rooting that it will come out from wherever you know whatever is going on with it and um, i i strongly feel that that's going to happen with louis vuitton especially because they've been around for so so long they have the history they have the product you know and uh, i think um I think it'll happen. I think it'll happen. So wishful thinking, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm looking into it too much, but I will never break up 100% with Louis Vuitton. <laughs> but I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this question. Why the loyalty? This brings up a very good point uh, because like I said in the beginning, I cannot deny some of the things that have gone on with it. Some of the things that I personally feel they would really benefit from improving. But at the end of the day, Louis Vuitton will always have my heart. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from DDP. How do you keep your Celine Nano clean on the inside? I just got mine and I find some things like paper bits stick to the interior. Uh, great question, but first and foremost, congratulations on your Nano luggage tote. I hope you love it as much as I do. Uh, okay, so since the uh, the luggage line in general does have the suede interior, uh, it can get very it can get dirty very quickly. Um, it's almost like it attracts lint like crazy. 
absolutely like crazy. Uh, I know some people have used, um, what's it called, uh, bag organizers in this so that that way they don't have to worry about any of the, any of the lint getting stuck to it. Um, I don't use a purse organizer, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I do think it will definitely add weight to this bag since it is an all leather bag. Uh, but I don't really, um, I don't really clean it out when I see those little bits while I'm using it. Only when I go to store it, then I will take a, um, what's it called, a, a lint roller to it. I'll lightly go through it and then I'll pick up whatever bits I can with my hand and then I put it away. So while I'm using it, it is what it is. It attracts it like crazy. Sometimes I'll see them like on the sides really bad and then I'll be able to pick those off. But um, yeah, <laughs> only when I go to store it is when I try to clean it up as much as possible. But my Phantom, um, my Phantom between the lint and sometimes even the scratches because of the suede that it has, you're able to see them a lot more versus is a lighter colored interior like the uh, the souris that I had in the mini luggage so yeah <laughs> those little bits can get a little can get a little um, some of them are kind of stubborn too like they just stay there even if you try <laughs> even if you try to take uh, the lint roller to it sometimes it won't come off but that's all I do just do it uh, just go through it after or right before I go to store it. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, all right, next one from Anel Lewis. Uh, what is your opinion on MCM? Is it considered a luxury brand? Would you add any MCM pieces to your collection? Fantastic question. So what is my opinion on MCM? Um, I've always appreciated them, but I kind of fell a little bit more in love with them on my recent shopping trip. Um, I've never, um, I've never thought twice about necessarily adding it to my collection. Like I said, I've always appreciated it, but then this last week when I was able to kind of interact with it a little bit more and try out a few things, I tried out the Weekender in this hot, hot pink with black trim. I thought it was super cute. Uh, I decided to pass on it only because I have three key balls and it's the type of item that I would only use when I travel, you know what I mean? If it was a tote, it would be completely different because it's something that I can incorporate into my, into my lifestyle a little bit more. Um, but I really like it. The, the overall feel of the, of the canvas, the overall feel of the leather and some of the details that they have, I really, really, really like it. Uh, so I think I want to add a card holder first just to see how it ends up working out for me. But uh, some of their totes are fantastic and they have great price points as well. So I really do applaud them for that. And are they considered a luxury brand? Some people consider them luxury. Other people consider them uh, contemporary. It's, it's kind of like it's right in between. Uh, but I think that they're great nonetheless. So would I add a piece to, them, to my collection? Absolutely I would. A card holder or... Um, their card holders or even their full zip wallets. Those are, those are really nice too. I think they retail for like 350. Uh, and on my Insta stories, I had a lot of you guys tell me you've had great success with your MCM pieces. A lot of you definitely recommend them. Some of you had said that you've had them for like five, six years, no issues, no cracks, nothing like that. So I think they're pretty amazing. So don't be surprised if you see an MCM piece in my collection anytime soon <laughs> because it definitely um, I definitely have a a, um, a bigger appreciation for them now than I did before so yes love MCM uh, all right next one from Steph Winters will you be doing another bags I've sold and why video soon uh, fantastic question and uh, I'm not too sure um, I think the last time I did one was probably about a year and a half ago maybe something like that. I think it's high time I do another one. Um, but I don't think I've sold too much since that video. I think I've only sold maybe two or three bags at most and maybe one or two small leather goods. So there isn't too much more that I would be, um, able to add as far as, you know, as far as giving you guys a little bit more feedback. Um, so I think, uh, I think I will definitely think about doing one, uh, sooner than later. But people get crazy on those videos. They get so crazy. And not that that's going to deter me from filming it, but the the comment section is always so, so negative, you know, because people think like you're, it might be something that they absolutely love. And if it might not work out for me, then I tell people it's because of this or because of that. 
and um, they get they get defensive. They get so defensive, and I completely understand that. But at the same time, different strokes for different folks. You know, just because a wallet on chain is one of the best purchases I've ever made from Chanel doesn't mean it's going to be the best purchase for someone else. You know what I'm saying? So uh, <laughs> it gets. I don't know. It, it's not the funnest video to film. You know, because it's almost like the minute that I start talking, I already know that <laughs> that I have like the evil eyes and people just uh, not happy with what I'm saying about the item. But at the end of the day, I am all about giving information and just sharing my two cents about any item. Um, and um, yeah, <laughs> I think I will definitely be doing one soon, probably within the next month, maybe month and a half, something like that. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> so hopefully that was able to answer your question. I feel like there's something in my eye and it is driving me crazy. So if I start winking out of nowhere, you know why. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on to the next question from Stacy R. Do you think it's fair to block and delete comments both on YouTube and on Instagram? Some people just want all positivity all the time and they shouldn't. Whatever happened to being able to voice your opinion without having someone shut you up? Uh, this is a great question and I know that this has come up on my Instagram account quite a few times and some of you might disagree with what I'm about to say and that's totally fine. Um, but while I do see your point, I am going to have to respectfully disagree. And the only reason I say that is because I block and delete all the time and I am proud of it. Uh, and um, it's not necessarily for myself wanting positivity all the time. I know that people aren't always going to agree with what I say and people aren't always going to love what I unbox or what I show. And that's fine because, I mean, it just... It's not, it's not going to be that way. And um, when someone does put things like that on the comment section, I'm always like, no worries, you know, to each their own. I hope you find something that you love, blah, 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 something like that. But I'm never mean or rude when someone says those comments. You also get the ones that are just absolutely 100% and completely ridiculously disrespectful. Those comments, that's where I draw the line. And that's where I will start blocking and deleting, blocking and deleting, you know, because it's almost like someone coming into your home and disrespecting you and you being like, well, it's okay, it's your opinion. No, that's not okay. That's definitely not okay. I'm a grown woman, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna go toe to toe with someone. I'm not 12 years old. I'm not gonna go to toe to toe with someone. I'm not gonna explain myself um, to someone that already has an idea of me, kind of like what I talked about last week. It's not gonna happen. I've had people, you know, on those same comments that are just like, oh my God, your, your laugh is so annoying. Can you stop laughing? It's so stupid, blah, 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 blah. Like that's neither, that's not constructive and that, that's, not, that's not a nice comment, you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, I can't change the way that I laugh. And I've said it before, I will never change for the cameras. Who you see on camera and who you see in real life is exactly how I am. And while well, granted, I might be a little bit more, a little bit louder in real life, I'm always very conscientious of the microphone when I, whenever I'm filming. Uh, but I'm the same person and I'm not gonna change for YouTube and I'm definitely not gonna change for someone that's going to be that obnoxious on my channel. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Kimmy Lochfield. Hopefully I said that correctly. I always imagine taking my Louis Vuitton handbags on work trips or on vacation, but I worry about them getting damaged on a flight or bad weather. How do you decide if or when you're going to bring one of your bags? Uh, this is a great, great question. And uh, when it comes to travel bags, there's a few different things. Uh, first and foremost, I always like to go for the all weather type of leather. Uh, the one that you don't have to think twice about rain, about snow, or the, t you know, like if you're leaving from sunny California and if you're going into, into rainy London, I don't have to think twice about the type of bag that I'm carrying. So that's definitely one thing. And also sometimes I like to dub certain handbags as travel bags. Uh, perfect example, my Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the Damia Azor. I love that bag. I rocked it to death. And now I kind of uh, tend to use it more as a travel bag because of the color transfer that it has. And it's one of those things that once I kind of have that in my mind, it kind of helps me get past if I was to, to, to get any more beauty marks on it, if I was to get any more um, 
wear or any more color transfer or anything like that it really helps me kind of um not think twice about how i'm carrying it or where i'm carrying it and it's it's almost like it is what it is type of thing you know what i'm saying uh, i've been able to put the the never full on the conveyor belt i put it on the floor i've i've set it on all sorts of places and to be completely honest I almost enjoy it that much more because I don't have to worry about it. It's very, very carefree, considering it's a type of print that is not known for being very carefree, you know? Uh, so that's what I like to do. Um, I definitely try to go for the type of leather that um, I don't baby, I don't think twice about, and uh, just dubbing certain handbags, the, the travel bags, and just going with the flow. And if it gets more beauty marks, then it just adds to the character of the bag type of thing. Uh, but you Usually, um, I end up going for caviar pieces from Chanel just because, again, it's very, very carefree. I love it. And also Damien Ben. Those two are the ones that end up sticking out on top. But like I said, one of my favorite travel bags is the Damien Azor. You know, like, a lot, I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't agree with that. But um, it really, it just makes me happy <laughs> that it's not, you know, it's not your, your norm for a travel bag as far as the type of print. But um I, I just love it. I love traveling with it. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from June Bug. Where do you research a bag that has little to no videos on YouTube? What other forums do you use? Any suggestions? Uh, this is a great, great question. And uh, when it comes to especially new bags that uh, don't have any videos, uh, I like to go on uh, the purse forum because sometimes a lot of people on there have some fantastic information either about details or even information that their sales associates passed on to them. Uh, so I love the purse forum for that. Um, also, uh, purse blog and uh, spotted fashion. They also have a lot of information on brand new handbags. Uh, I've also noticed that some of the groups on Facebook, um, they have a lot of information on there as well, just in case you can't find the videos. Um, and sometimes it just comes down to good old trial and error. <laughs> um, but I agree. Sometimes when it comes to um, when it comes to any bag, YouTube videos make it so much easier to get the good, the bad, and the ugly on any bag that you're that you're thinking about uh, adding to your collection because you get to see it you get to see um, you know you get to hear the people talk about the the details that they love or that they don't love so it makes it a whole lot easier but other times uh, those are the forums or those are the uh, the websites that I like to go uh, that I like to go to uh, just to get a little bit more info sometimes I've said it before sometimes I will go on Instagram and I will like hashtag whatever bag I'm looking for um, and if there's nothing on on any of those forums, on anything, on any other website, and if I find that someone has them or has that item, I, I will go on their Instagram and I will ask them, hey, what do you think about this bag or whatever it is. Sometimes, sometimes I think people think I'm a creeper, which I completely understand, uh, but I just, I want to get the, I want to get the 411 on the bag, you know, so that's what I'll do. Sometimes I'll resort to being a complete creeper. And I'm okay with that because if I wanna add a bag to my collection, I wanna know a little bit more about it, especially if that person can let me know, hey, you know, it didn't end up working out for me or I wasn't crazy about it because of X, Y, and Z or what have you. So yeah, <laughs> those are some of the things that I like to do uh, when it comes to an item that has no videos or there's no information out there for, uh, you know, to, to find out the good, the bad, and the ugly. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Laura Rives. Hopefully I said that correctly. What are your opinions on Mon Mono? I'm dying for a Neverfull, and besides the never-ending decision of MM versus GM, I'm now considering the Mon Mono. My dilemma is that it doesn't quite make my heart sing like the plain Jane Louis Vuitton canvas version. What are your opinions? Do you regret your speedy Mon Mono purchase? Any thoughts are appreciated. Appreciated. Uh, this is a fantastic question, and when it comes to Mon Mono, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I absolutely love it. I like the fact that you can personalize it to a certain extent. Of course, they do have uh, a select amount of colors to choose from, uh, but you can choose the stripes. You can also change the interior of the bag, which I am all about. Uh, but here I have my uh, Speedy 30, my classic in the Mon Mono, uh, and this um, does have the, the fuchsia and the blanc, uh, but I, I love this bag. I think it's super cute. Uh, I really like the fact that it's kind of started to oxidize a little bit more. It's almost like that honey golden color, and I think that it really complements the two colors that I chose. Uh, but, but, I have not used it as much ever since that guy came into the picture. Ever since the Speedy B25 came into the picture, 
I think I've used this bag maybe once or twice in that entire time. I still love it. I still think it's fantastic. I, I love, absolutely love that bright pink interior um, that I chose for it. But it's almost like I knew in the back of my mind that once I had another speedy monogram, regardless of it being a bandolier or not, and regardless of it being a smaller size than the 30, I had a feeling that one would kind of take the, the, the place of another type of thing. But when it comes to the Neverfull, um, I don't know, it all depends. If, um, if you're a really big fan of a certain color and that's like your signature color, then I say go for it, especially if you like, uh, if you want to change the, the interior of it, kind of like I did with the, with my Speedy, I think it's great. But if there's the slightest possibility that you might like the color at the moment, and then let's say in six months time or a year's time, you're kind of, um, over that color or you're not crazy about the combination anymore, then I would end up going for, um, for the beige one because the beige interior goes with everything. Thing. Um, it's almost like you, it's, it's one of those things that you don't have to think twice about type of uh, situation. Uh, but if there's the slightest doubt that maybe you will fall out of love with the colors, I would go for that one. But at the same time, if you just want to live in the moment and add a nice pop of color to a beautiful monogram bag, then absolutely go for the Mon Mono. So I don't know if that helps out or not. Uh, but like I said, um, I have not used this bag as much. Um, ever since that, that bad boy came into the picture. But if I didn't have that bad boy, I would still be using this. Um, so maybe I need to give this bag a lot more love. Huh. I'm not going to get rid of it. I know at one time I thought about getting rid of it, but I'm not because I think it's, I think it's too cute. Plus it has my initials on there. You know what I mean? So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Cindy Cochran. Have you seen the Urban Companion from Chanel? I tried it on when I was in Las Vegas, but the color options were limited and the chain drop was a bit short for me. I was very sad as I love the inside setup with the three sections. I have the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse and I love that bag. And the Urban Companion was similar. Thoughts? Uh, this is a fantastic question. And when it comes to the uh, Chanel Urban Companion, unfortunately, I don't have a picture to share with you guys. Uh, if I can find one in the meantime, I will put it on the description box below so you guys can check it out. Uh, but the Urban Companion comes in a few different sizes and I know that they've kind of changed a few of the details depending on the season, but it ranges anywhere from 3100 to 3400 or maybe 3600 somewhere along those lines if I'm not mistaken so please don't quote me on the price point um, but it kind of reminds me of the Chanel Rock and Roam bag because uh, the only thing is that it's almost like it's a perfect square for those of you that haven't seen it. It's almost like it's a perfect square. It does have the sections that are very similar to the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse like she had mentioned uh, and I don't know. This bag fits a lot more than you would think. And I know that they had like a wallet on chain, um, uh, a similar one that came out and you can fit so much more in it. So I think it's a great alternative to, uh, to a bigger bag. If you are the type that doesn't want to carry too much with you, it has a phenomenal price point. It's all leather. I do believe it does have the textile lining and it also comes with a, um, a little leather strap in between the chain so that way it makes it a little bit more comfortable and you don't have to necessarily worry that the bag is going to fall off. Uh, so I'm not too sure on the strap drop, on the strap drop like you mentioned. Um, I think some people have mentioned that's a little bit on the shorter side. Uh, but overall, I just, I really like it. I don't know. But the fact that you can fit so much more in it, it has the, it has the dual grommets on the top so you can kind of, um, change out this, not change out the strap, but you can change uh, how the strap looks on you if you're trying to go for a different look. I really do like that. And uh, again, for the price point that it has and what it offers, I think it's a really great option if you are looking for, um, if you're maybe not a fan of classics, um, of the classic double flaps or anything like that, and you still want to be able to carry a little bit more with you, but not have it be such an overwhelming bag, I definitely think that this is a great, great choice. Uh, so hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Lana Cogshall. In your opinion, which holds its value better, Epi or Empreinte? I'm specifically thinking about small leather goods, but I would love to know your thoughts in general. Uh, this is a great, great question. And when it comes to the better resale value between Epi and Empreinte, I have personally found that Empreinte 
holds its resale value a lot better than Epi does, which is kind of funny considering how carefree and virtually indestructible Epi leather is because of the texture that it has. Uh, some of you guys might have experienced the opposite, but just from the items that I have sold in the past, um, it, it's almost like they took the same type of hit as Vernie pieces do in comparison to the Empron. Uh, and I don't know if it's necessarily, when it comes to the small leather goods, I don't know if it's necessarily just because um, maybe uh, some people might like the softer leather on the small leather goods or um, maybe just they like the, the texture of it. That could be something. But when it comes to the handbags, I think that it's really because they're a little bit uh, more comfortable because they don't dig into your shoulder as opposed to maybe some of the Epi pieces um, that are out there. I'm not saying that all of them, but most of them uh, might not be as comfortable as the Empron is. Uh, and if you think about it, when it comes to the canvas version of the handbags, Monogram is always the most popular, even though, for example, a Damia Ben was the first one that came out, right? So I feel that it's almost the same thing when it comes to leather pieces. Uh, people are maybe are a little bit more fond um, of the embossing. It just maybe adds a little bit more to the bag. It's a little bit, it's, it's almost like it has a little bit more of an appeal to it. That's just, I mean, this is just my, my own assumption. That could be, I could be completely wrong. I have no idea, uh, but that could be the case. So it's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more comfortable when it comes to handbags. And when it comes to the small leather goods, I think just overall uh, the feel that it has and maybe um, the texture that the Epi has, maybe is, is probably what ends up hurting its resale value a little bit more, even though that, te that same texture is what makes it so carefree, you know? So I don't know. Again, these are just my own assumptions, but based on what I have sold in the past, uh, the Empreinte Leather definitely holds its resale value a lot more than Epi does. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. And the last question from Daphne Myers. I'm curious, how do you pick which questions to add to MMQAs? I see you respond to a lot of questions in the comment section. Why is that? Uh, this is a fantastic question. I have had this asked before, uh, but when it comes to the ones that I choose for MMQA, it all depends. Uh, for the most part, um, I like to go for questions that I haven't been uh, asked before. Sometimes uh, just because we are on MMQA 185, I will get repetitive ones, but if the question was asked asked, um, you know, the previous week or the week before that, then I will go in the comment section. I will try to answer it there. Uh, but uh, sometimes that happens. Other times I like to incorporate any, anytime there's uh, any, anything going on with price increases or new collections uh, or something that's kind of a buzz in the purse world, then I like to also, uh, I like to address those questions on MMQA because I think it makes for a really fun conversation in the comment section. I don't know, call me crazy. Maybe that's just me. Uh, uh, but other times I've also gotten questions from uh, from Instagram because I do get quite a few on my posts. So I try to I try to answer those as much as possible as well. Again, if it's something that hasn't come up in the past, um, but I try to I try I try to think like if someone was to watch MMQA every single week. And if it ends up coming up too many times, and I think that um, it might be a little too repetitive, again, I know that's going to happen just because I have been doing this for a little while. Uh, but I just try to add a little bit of variety on there and also being able to still give you guys as much, um, as much information as possible or to give you my opinion on whatever it is that you're asking. Uh, you know, so when it comes to the comment section, I am always in that comment section more so than any other video that I do. Um, I'm really bad at responding to comments on other videos. I do read them, but when it comes to MMQA, I don't know what it is. It's almost like, I just, it's almost like there's this instant connection. I don't know. I have no idea, but I look forward to all of, uh, all of your guys' feedback, all of your questions, especially if it's something that you're looking to add to your collection sooner than later. And if I can help you by giving you my opinion on it, um, then I'm all for it, you know? And if you look on the comment section on any given MMQA, there's anywhere from like 250 to 400 comments, you know, just from conversations that I've had with you guys. And I've gotten to know a lot of you throughout the years and I think it's awesome. So um, I do like to add variety here and there as much as possible and still being being able to keep it interesting for you guys, you know, because if I have the same question come up um, every single week, then I know, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be boring to you guys type of thing. So I don't know if that answers your question or not. Uh, but uh, yeah, I like to add a little bit of variety here and there. So hopefully that was able to answer it. Uh, all right, you guys. So that does it for MMQA. I hope 
you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help you guys had some amazing questions this week and my apologies for the lack of, of uh, eye candy this week uh, but for the lineup um, I'm thinking about doing a review on the Dior cruise wallet because I have used it quite a bit and um, now I feel that I have the good the bad and the ugly that I can share uh, and for the third video I thought about doing a um, um, where I buy, not necessarily where I buy, but maybe tips on buying pre-loved or maybe even some websites that I prefer to buy pre-loved or where I like to sell to. I know I've gotten a lot of questions throughout the last couple of months, throughout the last couple of years on that specific topic. I did do a video on it. I think a hundred years ago, so I think uh, I think it's time to to revisit the topic. Uh, so I wanted to be able to give you guys a little bit more feedback on that. So I'm thinking that will probably be up on either Friday or Saturday. I'm going to try my hardest to film it as uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but for the next like month and a half, my schedule is going to be all over the place. I'm still going to try my hardest to get three videos out a week for you guys. Uh, but if not, if something just falls through the cracks, just know that I'm, um, I'm running around like a maniac. <laughs> uh, but again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.